lightened up. That's what we call this podcast. We thought about calling it something else, and we've been through a number of names, and I've actually had a podcast called uh, Can I Help You with Craig Shoemaker? This is a combination of all of it, but really, our primary purpose is to enlighten the world through laughter, light, and levity, and who better to have as a guest as someone who's been in comedy for his entire life? How many times do you have a guest that's been in comedy their entire life, his stepdad, Bud Friedman, founded the improv back in the early 60s, and it's still the world-famous improv, Bud Friedman, but that's not who our guest is. Our guest is the stepson. <laughs> that's all I could get. That's Great intro. Way. I really feel good about myself. <laughs> that's really good. We don't have Bud, but we, we have this schmuck. We got this <laughs> Uh-huh. We're going to talk like Smirnoff the entire time. Nobody knows who he is. Everybody thinks it's Yakov Smirnoff, by the way. Was, they I know Yakov oh. Smirnoff, but nobody knows Bruce Smirnoff is our friend. And he actually was your babysitter, which he is was really crazy. My babysitter. And if you don't know who he is, you can Google him and go on YouTube and you see his one man show and you get to know who he is. Oh, really? He does it. It's one man shows on YouTube? Yes. It was shot in Kinescope. It was a long time ago. <laughs> it, it, it sounds good. It, it's, it, it, you can you can watch it. It's it's very entertaining. It was one of my favorite one man shows when he was doing it. It was really a great show, and he was he was like I can think he compared himself to Sisyphus, you know, the <laughs> the guy that put the you know the boulder up the mountain, and he could never quite make it there, and he really wanted to. That was a guy who was desperate, desperate to for attention and desperate for. I was a fat kid. <laughs> I was so fat, my picture on the wall fell off. <laughs> So he's laughing now. Ross is laughing now because I do the most dead-on Bruce Smith. If only he was famous. I think I'd be – everybody does Christopher Walken. Nobody does Bruce Smirnoff. No one does Bruce Smirnoff. You're I, like – you and I are like the only ones that, that I, do it. But I do make you laugh with it, though. We just spent a week together All at you have the to Bitcoin do is go, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's it. And I have Ross right. here. I can't believe he dressed up for us. <laughs> he has his Marty McFly vest on. Uh-huh. He looked in the mirror and said, how can I look more trashy for this big podcast? And he expects a big intro. Mm, ain't going to happen, babe. You got to think about what you're wearing. I hope those sweatpants you have underwear on because I don't want to see the outline of your balls. <laughs> Thank uh-huh. you. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Ross, you're a little different in front of, with a microphone in front of you. I've just spent the entire week with you, but I can see you're like concentrating on – well, what's he going to ask me that has anything to do with the well, podcast? Well, you're, you're the. I'm usually doing the interviewing, so I'm mm-hmm. the interviewer. So that's true. You have I, a podcast. I'm trying to listen, and I'm trying to be respectful. And no, I don't, don't wanna, be respectful whatsoever. I, you I don't want to. I don't want to be somebody that takes all the time away. And oh, no, I, take it, Ross. This is your <laughs> podcast. This is you, baby. It's, it's Ross, not. the boss. Be the boss, baby. I am playing Ross, the. Uh, Ross, 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 the good guy. No, Ross at a loss. <laughs> Ross at a loss. So as you mentioned, we did go to Miami. We yeah, went we there. Did, yeah. We were there for a week. That was the longest week of my life. Come I mean, on. Uh, you say that with oh, me right in front of I know, you. I, but you spent most just, of it with me. It was just the same people, the same conversations. <laughs> it was, you know, I mean, it was a nice convention. It was really, you know, was, yeah. you and I both had the whale passes. I still have mine on. I know. I love that you have your whale pass I forgot on. to and take By the off. way, you don't, might not want to walk around when people don't know what it is <laughs> with a sign that says whale on you. Got it right here. Especially because, you know, you're not like uh, that thin. So you don't, Son of a... You don't, want, you don't want to walk around, hey, look, I have a bracelet. <laughs> and it comes off if I lose 30 pounds. It says whale on your, on your wrist. I took mine off right away. I did you not snapped it? it. Yeah. No, I took scissors. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'll do it today. You I can't just, it just, it was, I have an emotional attachment to this. And you know, I just as soon as it comes off my wrist, it's just it's just. He's emotionally be attached because for uh-huh. a week, yeah, for a week, he, everybody thought he was rich, and then he came <laughs> home and looked at his bank account. Uh huh. I got nothing, he's man. Got, he's got nothing. <laughs> you know what you have? Nothing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Smirnov is our is our favorite comedian. But when you say he's the funniest comedian out there, like ever. I mean, his antics off stage. I mean, material wise, no. No, that's true. His but his his off stage antics and just the character and how he's always been single, and he's always complaining and he and he gets jealous <laughs> of every neurotic. comic. Every comic that makes it, he gets oh, mad. Yes. I mean, you know, he <laughs> and you know he's been around a long time. I mean, Bruce Bruce has been long a long time. And he had many opportunities and he failed at almost every one. 
And he talks about it as one man show. And it's 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 really if you have time, try to watch it. It's yeah. really good. Now before we move on to your career, which we will. Okay. I did want to tell you the story. This is a great time to tell it about Smirnoff in acting class. Okay. By the way, uh, listen to this. There's two people listening in the other room, right? Watch how they laugh at one of Bruce's jokes. See, he really does have some, some funny material. He does, but you. But, I move, but I hold move. on. <laughs> you say the jokes a lot better than he does. Your timing is 20 <laughs> times better than his. <laughs> this really, comes from the expert who really, literally chose the last comic standing cast. You would choose them every week. I should have yeah. gone on as him. I would have I would have made I it. Wish, I wish you did come on. I would have been grand champion of head of that fan. You, uh-huh. you would have been you would have been great on that show actually. I could have been Vietnamese and 20 pounds. But people were actually the first season of that show people were scared to do it. They didn't know what it was. Yeah. And they knew like American Idol they knew. They didn't know what last comic was. They a lot of people thought they were beneath it. Well, and some people did it, though, that were t- big-time pros, like Kathleen Madigan. That was the second season, not the first season. Oh, I see. She, Kathleen, I actually managed Big Kathleen. pros the next year. Yeah, I mean, it was like the, the second year, it was Kathleen and Alonzo Bowden. And yeah, Rich Voss. Rich Voss. I mean, I, I called— Ralphie May. Uh, Ralphie May was first season. Oh, he was the first yeah, season. Yeah, Ralphie May was first season. We discovered With that him. that fan won. That fan won. Uh-huh. Great story. Uh, That's a great story. <laughs> It's another story that makes me more resentful. I didn't grow up. You were, I'm sorry. I didn't grow up in a third world country. You were through rice patties. Uh huh. You were doing. That's you were, what he would say. You were already headlining. You were getting TV deals. It wasn't the right show for you at that time. No, not or any. I mean, I would beg you to do the show if I was doing it back then. I would Let like, me tell you would, something. Please, please do it, Craig. I promise you, you'll you'll do great. But yeah, you, you cast know. that one. You were on the show. You, yeah, you're, you're Tonight you're Show good. producer. All those years. We're going to get to all your credits because we you're. You're a very big guest that we have here. Uh Uh-huh. He's wearing a whale pass. (laughs) So I'm going to tell you one Smirnoff story. This is for the entertainment of everyone out there. Everyone is going to Google him. He's going to have this huge career based on this podcast because we find him to be very funny. He's, as you know, very shallow, right? And everything was about his agenda to make it, to get back at all the the girls that that thought I was a fat (laughs) shit kid. (laughs) He wants to get even with them. So That's you were, his whole goal. And we yeah. went to acting class together. This is back in the 90s. 90s or 80s? 90s. 90s, okay. So our first day, it's Howard Fine. Do you know him? He's a big yes, acting teacher, of course. right? Yes. yes. But no one out here knows. He's a very big actor. Everybody was taking his class. This is back in when Mickey Rourke was like very popular. So he, everybody had that Mickey Rourke style. All the guys would go in there, you know, just emotional with the, the Mickey Rourke look. They all had that, and we did not. We would make fun of Mickey Rourke types. So he would sit there and go, uh-huh, another Mickey Rourke? <laughs> He's on the kid and himself express train, babe. Uh-huh. <laughs> so now the first day of class, Howard says, this is a true story. We're all in a circle. He goes, okay, class. We're going to go around the room, and we're going to say why you came to class, who sent us to class, and what we hope to gain from class. Right. So the first person goes and he's doing asides to me and I'm losing my shit. Right, Ross? You would lose it if he was whispering to you during this serious acting class. Everyone took Howard Fine to go to class. So they thought you would have a career. So anyway, first girl goes, she goes, well, I'm here because my husband is vice president of Universal. And he thought if I took acting classes, that it would make me feel empowered. And he goes, and he would whisper to me, mm mm-hmm. He knows he's got three hours with the mistress at the Four Seasons. <laughs> he sends her here. She's on the Kidner Self Express train. Uh huh. You got to be kidding me. She stinks. <laughs> that's what he does. Exactly. Just so everybody knows, that's exactly how he talks, and that's exactly his 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 words he uses. Those exact, are the, those yeah. are, he stinks. That's a huge a huge wordage he uses, and the tone and the and the yeah. whole pace of his speech is perfect that Craig is doing. Right, but but better than him. <laughs> the timing's twenty times better. So, so anyway, so anyway, then the next one goes. He goes. I'm here because my 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 husband is a director and he wants to put me in movies. Mm-hmm. And he's next door at the Four Seasons with his with his whore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> While this horse getting herself in acting class, he's ripping on everybody who goes, right? So then it comes to him. He goes, hi, everybody. My name is Bruce Smirnoff, (laughs) and I'm here because I want to be famous. I want to be big, 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 big. I want to be big, big, so that all the girls that wouldn't go, they wouldn't go out with me in high school, they'll regret it. And I heard, and I'm not related to anybody. I'm not married to a director, so I got to do it the hard way. 
<laughs> He's saying it's like people are staring at him. No, no laughter. You were dying. Losing it. I couldn't breathe. I'm going, woo, 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 woo. This is my first day in class. And Howard Fine sitting there. He's not happy. He goes, and I heard if I put Howard Fine on my resume, that I'll be big, big, big. Because everybody goes to Howard Fine. If you want to be famous, you go to Howard Fine. And I met you in Candy Herman's class. You had a mutual party, a Halloween party. You were there. You were dressed as the Queen of Diamonds. And he goes, I was the king. <laughs> and he goes, I don't know what made me think you're a queen. And he goes, I'm not saying the right thing. No, no, I'm, he tries to get out of it. He didn't realize he just said to a queen, I didn't know what made me think you're a queen. Um, now, I can't breathe. I had to leave the class. Right. And then we got in trouble all the time. <laughs> One more thing I'll tell you. I know this is your podcast. From now on, you're going to talk. <laughs> sure. We're in, cl we're in class and Howard's, they're all serious, all these actors. And we're two comics, right? He's in the back of the room writing on a piece of paper. I took the piece of paper from him. I swear to God, this is true. I grabbed it from him. And Howard goes, you're next, Craig, for your monologue. Instead of doing a monologue, I read this. I read his piece of paper, what he was writing in class. And it says, dear Schick. Your razor is absolutely amazing. <laughs> he goes, I'm sitting here in a boring acting class, and I'm doing this in front of the class. Are you doing the impression? I'm doing the impression and and reading what he wrote. Dear, is anybody it's, laughing? It or? started with dear shick. Is anybody laughing? Or no, no one's laughing. He's purple. And it's like taking a washcloth to my face. It's the most amazing razor. It's anything is better than a razor I'd like to take to myself if another Mickey Rourke impression comes up <laughs> on stage. They stink. I'm doing this in front of the class. He was not happy. He got even with me. Anyway, I'll tell you the story another time. Ross Mark is here. Ross is our guest. And we just did spend a week together. We had so much fun. You know, it is fun. It's fun like bonding as adults. You know, both of us are, you know, we're we've already done the career we've made it and it's just fun to have a good time bonding like a buddies bond you know what i mean and hanging out and dinner tell about the dinner that we had um remember the dinner we had which one and then the music came on right after <laughs> remember that what, tell me are you you're really out of it right now no no this, i thought this, I, I mean again how did you forget the dinner that we had with someone really famous oh right 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 so <laughs> we're, I'll, let me tell the story so of we're of course i want you to so start we're talking at, we're, we're, we're in south beach and you called me, you said, come down here. I'm having dinner with Kenny Loggins and his, and his girlfriend, Lisa. Yeah. And great people. I never met Kenny before, and I never met his girlfriend before. She's fantastic people. Well, you know his music. He's got a million hits. Oh, I mean, Kenny has Footloose. He has the Danger Zone. I mean, this is it. I mean, he's iconic. I mean, we, I, I told you when I met him, he, yeah. this guy's iconic. This right. guy yeah. has done it all, and he's iconic. And, and if you see him, he, no one knows who he is. And he's there because we are all there. Right. We're taking our business to the Bitcoin community, to NFTs. Right, so he's doing NFTs, right. For his, he wants to do private concerts, sell some lyrics that he's had. There you go. And you mint these things, and I'm doing a show, and you're doing a platform. So tell me what your perspective was. You sit down with this iconic superstar at one time. So I'm, we're sitting with them, and they're playing 80s music. And my mind, yeah. I'm going, I wonder when they're going to play the Kenny Loggins song. Seriously, in my I mind, know. I'm going like, me too. Well, when are they playing Footloose? When are they playing? Does it, get a, does it get uncomfortable? Yeah. I mean, Cindy Lauper's coming on, right. and they're, you know, they have Boy George is hitting it. <laughs> so you and I are looking at each other. All of a sudden, we finish. We, you know, Kenny gets up and leaves with Lisa five minutes later. Right. Literally. Footloose comes on. Got a footloose. And, <laughs> and, and you're running around with the chicken with the chicken head, head <laughs> cut off because you're looking to tell somebody like, I just ate with no. Kenny Loggins, babe. No, I wanted to tell the waiter. I wanted to say. I so I finally did flag the one who took our photos, trying to charge us money. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. <laughs> she tried to. So she took our photos and I go, hey, you know who that was at the table? You hear that song that's playing? And she goes, I don't know this song. So that was, ended, that was the end of that. That was it. That was yeah, it. We were the only ones impressed. That was it. But I mean, we, we spent a lot of time with Kenny and. I mean, there was a lot, uh, tons of people were there. I mean, there was big, big people in the Bitcoin community. And, yeah, it was fun to get and, to know the and, business. And you and I, like, we're not experts in Bitcoin, but after that whole week, we became pretty knowledgeable. I mean, I, yeah. I, I can hold conversations now about Bitcoin. and It's an entirely, you know, it's obviously, you and I, you know, you and I come from, we come from fold a dollar bill and go, here you go, here's for, yeah. here's for some new braces for your kids. <laughs> you know, that's how we exchange money. But now they're going, you just press this button and all of a sudden you'll have a wallet, a crypto wallet, which I had no idea until I got there about all of this. And it's really going to be 
the wave of the now. It is in the future. And last night, yeah, I watched. I don't know if you watched Billions. I watched Billions last night. Yeah, and Billions they had a whole thing about crypto wallets and how Prince um, has like ten crypto wallets with like all this money in it. Prince, the singer? No, Prince, the guy that took Axe's place. You don't watch the show. So Prince is the main oh, character. Oh, I thought you meant now. Prince. I thought no, he, no, he's dead name, and they're looking for his no, wallets no. everywhere. So, so Prince, who's the who's the main character now, who's, who owns the company, because Axe went to Switzerland. Mm-hmm. He's the main guy this year. So he, the whole theme of the episode on Sunday was they can't get into his crypto wallet. And he has like a $3 billion in it. Mm. And he didn't, he didn't have the codes. So they kept on like trying to tap into it. And after the 10th attempt... It locks. The money goes away. Wow. So the money went away. He lost $3 billion. But oh. it kind of explained what crypto is and how much yeah. money. I mean, I was yeah. just I was just there. So for me, it was like, I mean, how ironic is this? The whole episode's about cryptocurrency and how rich people are from it. It's based on somewhat of a true story. I'm sure you heard that in England. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like buried. I mean, you, you and I it. met a lot of people. I mean, I met so many people from all over the world. And they're so... There's so when it comes to Bitcoin, these people all they they live and breathe it. That's the whole. You know what I liked about it? There's something so fresh and unique, and we don't find that many times. It's yeah. like you know you go to concert, not a concert, conferences or conventions, and it's like you know arrogant people that have you know they have all this money that they inherited. You know the oil business has been around forever. This is brand new. There is no one. There's no one there that can be that big of an expert because no. the most they've been at it is seven. Like seven years, like right? Like ten years, like two thousand twelve is the right. Yeah, yeah. So, so there can't be any, you know. No, not some guy like thirty years ago. Well, I remember when I was a young buck. I, mean, you know, I, I was raised I, by I, my yeah. my pappy. My pappy had his first oil well in the nineteen thirties. <laughs> hey, I remember when he tapped into that sucker. I was a, a wee bit of a mite, and now. Now I've handed it on so, to my children. Yeah, so it doesn't just, happen like that. Just to tell people, I mean, these people are in their thirties, twenties. Multi yeah. multimillionaires. A lot of them never worked a day of their life. They just got into cryptocurrency really early, and now they just they just trade and buy crypto, and they and they never really had a real job. Yeah, you know. And you and I bust our balls for many years, and we oh, wouldn't you like to just you know? That's what I think I'm going to do. Is I mean, I'm getting into the space in a different way, and so are you. You have a right a platform, but I called I Sapphire. do I am involved in crypto. I I did listen to a few people that knew what they were doing, and I bought some stuff yesterday. You did I bought Avalanche? I bought Next. I've been buying stuff that that our friend Tillman Holloway told me about, and I met this. Why don't British you turn me on to this? I'm just going to ride you. You're a whale. Yeah, I mean, I, I just talked to Tillman. I mean, I, I I mean, I just talked to Tillman, and he he's it's like I feel it's like inside information. That's right. You know, I mean, these guys, they kind of control the market. And if he tells me to get something, I buy it. I, I'm with you on that. I mean, why not? You know, it's like, it's like a study partner. You want somebody who's a genius. You do. And instead partner. of instead of like put, buying, putting money in your IRA, I'm putting it in cryptocurrency. That, that's I, I that's my plan. Because yeah. because IRAs, you know, you'll make the 7 8% a year, but crypto, you can make a lot more. My wife, my wife got me involved. And I, I remember you told me. Yeah, I, 4X. Yeah. It's now up to it was three X and now I'm four making four X on my money. It's unbelievable. And I, I love it. I love to watch that money grow without me. Listen, you and I, we've always been this way. We're grinders. We're grinders. We're grinders, but we 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 welcome new technology. We welcome the future. A lot of people put their hand out and say, I don't want to be involved in oh, this. Oh yeah. You know, I, I it's, my, it's the old way, it's no right. way. You know, you and I, I talk to wealthy people that do that. Right? Yeah, I mean, you and I are very are very smart in which we don't close our eyes and, and pretend there's no there's no cryptocurrency. Well, yeah, well, aren't the greatest creators open anyway? I oh well, yeah. There's something oh, to be yeah. said about the creative arts. It's unfortunate yeah. that I think that people don't really have the respect I mean, you, for the creative arts. Yeah. You have to be tapped to your creator to be creative, and you have to be open. You can't live you can't live a myopic life. No. You have to be open to every you know diversity, everything, including how we do our currency, how we do our finances. We have to stay in that space, and then you will profit from it. And then on 60 Minutes on, on Sunday, Uh-oh. they did a whole story about Crypto Beach in El Salvador. Uh, oh, I saw that. Did you see it? That was a rerun. I, th- I saw it. They, where, where they, their entire currency, their Yeah, ATMs. yeah, but they, 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 they added some new stuff to oh, it. Oh, they, when they, do they a re- updated. They, 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 they up, did yeah. update. But I mean, it's just ironic. You and I were in Miami for the Bitcoin conference in uh, 60 Minutes, and then, and then also... Billions, which is a very popular show on Showtime, yeah. they talked about 
Bitcoin also. Yeah. Big, big topic. On it is show. one of those things you go, am I too late? It's always one of those. You're not, you're not too late. I know. I know. But, you know, we all wish. But we also wish, though, with Apple that we, you, you would be a billionaire if you put 10 bucks. I bought Apple. I started buying in 2001. When, oh, I, started the, when I started the Tonight Show. Wow. I, I, I was making pretty good money, and I, I wanted to invest in something. I bought Apple. I was getting Comcast because I worked for Comcast and GM. I mean, it's not GM, but GE. And then I also I, I also bought um, Tesla in 2013. Wow, those are so, good. Those so are good ones. I, I, I personally invested in Blockbuster. <laughs> how are they doing? Did, did you ever hear the story about Blockbuster? Um, how the people at Netflix approached them and, and yeah. said, we want to be yeah. partners with you. Right. Netflix did. Right. And they said, who the, who the hell are you guys? Oh, are? I know. And, right? and they totally blew Netflix off. Yep. And now Netflix is huge. People forget Blockbuster had arenas. They had everything. They had, I, just, I mean, just, and they but are they, down, I think they're down to one store now. I, I think there's one, and that might be closed. I, I saw this on the news yesterday, and I want to see if you can guess how many stores they have left. How many stores do you think Kmart has left? Wow, Kmart. Mm. Yeah. How many do you think they have? Let's move me away yesterday. I saw it on the they news. They had so many. They had over 2,000 at one time. Well, there were so many that you could actually use it in your comedy act, and everyone would know. Oh, what yeah, the, yeah. Kmart, you know, attention yeah. Kmart shoppers. We have blue light, light special yeah. in aisle four. I, I mean, that, that was my closing bet. I mean, <laughs> you know. Everybody did a Kmart. You could not do that today. They would say, what the hell what, are you What's Kmart? About? So how many stores um, do you think they have? Yeah, definitely, definitely Kmart. And I think it was even, I think it was even <laughs> Rain Man. Kmart sucks, remember? Yeah, Kmart, yeah. yeah. Definitely came so how many, how many, how many stores do they have? I'd say they, they probably get... have 15 left. Three. They have three stores left. Oh, wow. Think about that. How three that stores happen? left. Well, Amazon. Um, oh, Amazon. Killer. Amazon killed it. Target. Yeah. Um, it just, it's amazing. I mean, it's the just foresight, three stores The left. foresight with some of these things. That's why you have to trust some of the foresight for crypto. But that's why you and I are, are, yeah. are, are yeah. using it and educating ourselves. Right. And we're not taking it for granted. Like, oh, I don't have to. I mean, you and I sat through these horrible, horrible, like, speeches. I mean, we were sitting there in the thing, like, looking at each other. What am I doing here? I mean, we, we, we were, like, watching people talk about crypto and stuff. And, and half the time, people weren't really making sense. But some people were good. Yeah. I was thinking he was bad, but you and I kind of, we're looking at each other. Like, you also, uh, listen, let's be honest. You and I are a little jaded when it comes to performance. It's yeah, funny it's you say that. Kenny Loggins actually said, what did you think of that speaker? Now, the, he's asking me, a comic and a speaker, and a speaker. at a high level, Very what high, I think yeah. of another speaker. And I had to be honest with him because he was impressed with the speaker. And I said, I took him down this road of where I thought the guy wasn't authentic. And, you know, these are the things that I do in my coaching is like, no, you want to be really genuine. And I thought you can, you know, all the tricks. Like one of the tricks is when in doubt, say fuck. That, that's and a actually, so comic did trick. You, did you see that young guy, how he did that? Yes. So, and it made everybody like, has this little surprise to it, you know, because you're used to speakers not saying that. So it's like, hey, I'm a rebel. Yep. So there's all that that's going on when it's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. He's saying it because he's uncomfortable. No, and he has no material. And he has no material. He has exactly. nothing to say. But that's what know, comics do. I mean, the thing is, when you're speaking public like that, you have to have a sense of humor. You have to be engaging. Right. And you just can't spit out facts. I mean, there were some pretty big names that were spitting out facts from like, he was, felt he was reading the paper and I was like falling asleep. Yeah. Why do we want to see that when we could just read it? I don't know. They paid that person probably a hundred thousand dollars to get up there and he's, he's right. and he's on a big show on abc i'm not going to mention his name but he, they paid him probably a lot of money oh yeah and he uh a number it, of people yeah. were like that and you know what this guy did that they he was kenny was like impressed with the guy you know kenny logs obviously he's yeah. been performing for a very long time he was impressed with the guy i said yeah i was a little bit and he had some great information when his tech went out this is the part where again i teach this is if you are if you are organically you, authentically you, you can handle any situation. I tell comics all the time, I say, you know, it's not your jokes. It's not your writing. It's who you are that needs to be developed because every situation happens. I'll never forget I was on this radio show and the guy kept pressing buttons, like sound effect buttons. You know this guy. He's there, okay. Boop, bing, boom, bing. You know, I'm going, what the hell? I'm trying to fit a joke in here. And he's going, bing. you know, I'm going, okay. So then I'm on Howard Stern the following week. You have to adjust to all of your environment and all the changes. Lights could go out. Microphone goes out. Who are you that responds to that? This guy, his tech went out. He had no idea what to he do. Panicked. He probably panicked. He panicked, yeah. He didn't know what to do. He was yelling, you know, come on, somebody help me here. You know, and, in, and you know, situations like that, like yourself, you have many years of experience. You know how to yeah. handle any situation. You've been in 
horrible one night. Every single every situation, situation imaginable. you've been in. And I was in a mall performing in a mall, and yeah. all the lights went out. <laughs> what happened? I I did mine. <laughs> I was up there, Marcel, Marcel. Nobody knows who he is. Anyway, I had to adapt. That's what you have to do. You have to adapt. You have to adapt. You have to be a Marine. A Marine's adapt. That's and, right. And a lot of people can't adapt. I mean, you and I. It's a good analogy, by the way. Yeah. You and I can adapt in any situation. I mean, I, I can do it anywhere. I can, if I'm in a, any, any situation I can adapt to. Right. Um, if somebody's being not nice, I can adapt to that person. Wow. If, yeah. You know, I, I know how to handle people and, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a gift. It really is. And you teach, you teach that to people. You teach people how to be funny, how to be articulate, how, how to, to bring out their own sense yes, of self but, and therefore sense of humor. But it's a humor, skill which, set and, yeah. and you you have it and you know how to teach it and people should actually take advantage of it Here, a lot more. Yeah. Here's a fundamental question I have for you. A lot of people ask me, do you think you're born with the talent of, of comedy? I think it's, I think it's growing up and being situations like, if your father's funny, if your mom's funny, if you're if you listen to comedy albums back, so it's in the environmental. Day, it's environmental. I mean, I so you believe anyone is born? Yes, I mean most comics I know all have stories how they listen to Richard Pryor, right. and how their dad was really funny, or their mom was, or mm -hmm. they watched certain shows growing up, and and it, it it's a it's a totally environment. I don't think it's like you're born with it. Um, I think you're born with maybe having some experience of like talking to people and not being shy. I think that that's, that's a trait that people are born with not being shy. And, and don't you find that some comedians get in it because they're shy and it's, this is how they, oh yeah. that's this is how they, I mean, I, I know comics that are horrible off stage Yeah, and you and I, you know, I'm not a comic, but you off stage, you know, you're, you're great. I mean, you're fun to be around. People love you, but I know comics that are bitter, mean, angry. You don't want to be around them. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to mention any names, but uh, you know, oh. I've been, you know, I, I've been around many comedians. You don't have to mention names. Just say comedian. Uh, just say it's all of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's tons, but it is, it is a lot. Yeah. Have, they carry a misery and misery does love company. And I've noticed the miserable comics hang out with other miserable comics. And what's weird is to be honest with you, I have felt like not a part of, but then there's other part of me is going, but why would you want to be a part of, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but you were you were really balanced. You had a family. You had kids. You you didn't have to hang out at clubs at night. You don't have to go to the comedy store or improv. There's at night. a lot of people that have kids, but my point right, is, right, but you you were not. They a would guy. still go to the comedy store late at night or improv. And I just saw the 50 year anniversary yeah. of the comedy store. Yeah, I was there. I got my name on the wall and all that. But I was not a hang guy. Yeah, but you were there at the at the party. Did you go? No. Oh, no, we, it, was, it was during, we, it was during, during Miami. During Bitcoin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, again, I, don't, I don't even know if I was, I was probably not even invited. I was never a regular. That's what I'm the, saying. You were a guy that I'd, never, that never hung um, out at yeah, LA clubs. Right. You never did. I mean, yeah. you would come in, when I was working there, you would come in and do a guest set. Right. You would do something for the industry. Um, right. You, you would do stuff like that. But you weren't a guy that would sign up for sets. I mean, when I was growing up, Richard Lewis was there every night. Rick Dukerman was there every night. Mm -hmm. Jay Leno. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld. We're talking, you right. know, these great comedians back in the 80s. And even like, you know, like all of them, you know. Even, oh, yeah. You, uh, you've, they all were there. You've seen every one of them grow. Yeah. But my point is a lot of them like to hang yeah. in that vibration of negativity. And that's why I avoided it mostly. And yet there's the other part of me that's kind of jealous. Like I'm not in that crowd. Like we've had a lot of comics pass away recently. Yeah. And you see how they hung with the comedians who are really upset by it. And, you know, I, I just was never that close with any of them. I mean, no. I mean, not, no. not like enemies or not even, but you know, I, like I knew Bob Saget. I know, you know, Louis Anderson. I love these guys, but never that close where, this group, there are these groups that hang out with one another, and uh, it's truly a mourning because they lost their brother or their sister, yeah. or whoever it is. But I have more of like I lost my friend from kindergarten. That's more. That's more. That to me is impactful. And, I think about him every day. Frank Cassidy. He was my accountant. I shared a milk and carton, you know, carton of milk and a cot together. You know, I mean, this is a guy that stole my mom's accountant. Like our fan, he's yeah. family to us. That's and, somebody that you have an attachment with. I but, mean, but this is, but they make the comedians make the club their family. They do. I mean, I'll give an I example. I saw the documentary by Mike Binder about the, yeah. the comedy store. I mean, there was like Norm MacDonald, for example, when Norm passed, 
yeah. the first person I called was Bob Saget. Right. Because Bob directed him in, in Dirty Work. Mm -hmm. Bob was, the, I don't know if you saw his eulogy on, on, his, on his podcast. It was unbelievable. His eulogy about Norm was, I was, yeah. I was in tears. Mm -hmm. um, it was great. And then a few months later, Bob dies. Right. You know? And that whole group is like Adam Sandler, Rob Schneider, David Spade, even like Adam's producing partner, Alan Covert, was a comic sure. back in the day when I, I remember the improv. Alan, yeah, he wasn't that great. he wasn't that good, but he 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 got his he he got his, he, he attached to to Adam and who's Adam's best friend. A lot and, of them did that. Spade and, attached himself to Dennis Miller. Yeah, I remember when he was first starting, and he was with Dennis Miller a lot. Of, and then that's where the friendships develop. Yeah, whereas. You know, like I said, I get a little jealous, but then the part of me is going, "Hey, I'm going home to my family, yeah. and really enjoying them way more than I would uh, a lot of times Hollywood or transactional relationships." It's like, well, if you're hot now, I'll be your friend, or if you can do something for me, and I'm not into that. I cannot jive with that. I never told the story, so I was working at the Improv, I was booking the talent on Melrose, and uh, back then it was like who's who in comedy, and Adam Sandler was in town and he would call me as Bernie Brillstein, like do the impression and say, this is Bernie Brillstein. You can't give, I don't want to mention the comic's name. I don't want this guy getting spots at the improv anymore. You know, he did an impression of him, a Bernie. And he did, he did that could have been, hold, let me yell at somebody for a second. Who's talking yeah. loud out there? You pain in the asses. I can't hear it, but <laughs> long story I, I, short, I, I, long, long story I short, hearing, but anyway, co comics get jealous and yeah. they see somebody. Performing. He was being real though. It wasn't like a joke. He was really pretending. I, he was I knew it was Adam. Busting. I mean, Adam called and I said, Hey, and he Adam. was doing it for real though. Was, he didn't break character at all. And he was like, you know, this is Bernie Brillstein. You know how Bernie's really yeah. aggressive and uh -huh. very loud. And uh, you know, Bernie, if people don't know, he was probably one of the biggest comedy managers Ever. ever yeah i mean he has he has books out and he's um and you know he uh I produced he's, a, he's a, a lot of television shows uh, he's a he's a legend i mean but bernie's Bro, a legend you see that at the end of uh, most of the credits brolstein gray brolstein yeah. gray so he, so yeah. you know he would call me and whoever the comic was he would say this is bernie brolstein no <laughs> it's hilarious but and you're going adam uh, I, no I it's bernie adam <laughs> But I mean, I, I totally forgot about That'd that. That'd be funny if you did an impression of your stepfather, but for <laughs> I've done that Adam. before. Tried, I've done that a million times. Uh, you know, comments calling and they want to talk to Bud, and, and Bud doesn't want to talk to people. Speaking of Bud Freeman and the club, that was the other thing. I came here kind of like a little, you know, a little bit of a guns, gunslinger. Me, Richard Jenny, John Mulroney, and we really got our chops back east with doing one night Jerry Stanley gigs and things like that. So when we moved to California, we really said. Okay, move over, because we have these bar chops. You guys, I mean, I remember when you moved here, and Mulrooney too. Yeah, and you and, J and Jenny was one of my favorite comics. I oh, mean, ever. I mean, his, his, his all time. He's probably one of the best comics ever. Ever, to and perform. people don't realize it. Richard Jenny, no, he would he his would take material a joke, was so good. He would take it down to the carcass. There was so nothing good. left on that bone, and he was so epic and yeah. so good. And it's a shame that he died so early, but. What I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is this: I mean, you you came to town and you were ready to be seen. I mean, you you, right. were, you were this open micer guy. You were headlining. You did a lot of impressions. Smirnoff which, would call me up and go, like, "Hey, how you doing, babe? You know why I'm calling you? I'm kissing your ass because you're going to be a big, big star, and I'm going to be the neighbor. I'm going to be the annoying neighbor on your sitcom. Here comes Bruce. Mm -hmm. And personally, I think you stink. You stink." These people are coming all – Bud Freeman comes all over you. I don't get it. Yeah, so and, Bud Bud was a, obviously a big judge of talent. Yeah. And you observed this, him being your stepfather. What was that like? I mean, to – I learned a lot. I mean, I, I, I booked the comics on The Tonight Show for 15 years. So I broke a lot of comedians from Last Comic Standing from The Tonight Show. A lot of people you see on TV now or that, that are headlining theaters. Or who's, headlining. who's your proud – give me your top three proudest – Weren't much when they came to you, and you kind of discovered the Probably stars. Kevin Hart. I, I Kevin up, Hart? Kevin Hart. Jeez. I mean, he was he had the sitcom. The sitcom failed. I he put did? Him, yeah, he had a sitcom on ABC. It was, it was, oh, it was, wow. No one talks about it. But I put him on, a, I put him on as a lead guest on the Tide Show when he had nothing. I, I I never I know and then I would say lead guest on the Tonight Show. Yeah, lead guest. What are you talking about? The lead guest. Well, if he, I mean, he he, he had, had to have something to be a lead guest. He had I forgot I forgot I forgot why we put him on, but I just I told my boss we got to put him on, um, and he killed it. Kill oh yeah, and then Louis C.K. Louis C.K. I put on as lead guest. Oh man, um, 
Joe Coy, I gave his first wow. late night. First, his first Playing late stadiums night. now. First late night. Um, These guys should all give you a little vig. They should, they, they should kick you Gabriel some. Iglesias, I so put on last time. better, Ross. So somebody, should, somebody should send you a pair of pants. I mean, there, there, there's been a, a, lot, a lot of comedians. I like this vest. It's a, actually Michael Jordan vintage. Uh, okay. Um, but a lot of comedians, I mean, back in the day at the, at the improv, I put Fallon, Jimmy Fallon on the stage in L.A. for the first time. Yeah. I mean, no one knew who he was. It was this young kid doing uh, tr- troll bits. He troll dolls on his guitar. Yeah, and he did guitar. I he was did, approached by did, his manager. Remember who his manager Randy was? Randy Siegel. Randy Siegel comes up to me. I, I was at Caroline's packed audience. Everybody always uses my audiences. No, <laughs> they literally I, I, do. I, I had to because your audiences are really smart. Yeah, it's smart and, you know, they're, they're up middle age. They're, they're, they're not like, right. they're not, they pay attention. They're not punky kids no. and, you know, with you an have, attitude. You have a great audience. So, so she comes up and she goes, oh, my client, uh, Jimmy Fallon, who I'd met before, she says, uh, he's auditioning for the, for the yes, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And I said, I said, you know, I don't like people going up during my show. Of course. I, was like, I consider myself a play. You don't go to to rent and say, listen, I've got this whole bit that I want to do that, 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 <laughs> about, about, about skydiving and I'm going to put in the middle of your play. All I right? want to do West Side Story to, before yes. your play. I've got uh, yeah, this thing, the so King and I, knows, we're going to do Shall We Dance. Fallon, Jimmy Fallon was a big impressionist. Yes, he a was. Big, a big part of your act is, is impressions. So, yeah, that's another and thing. Is I, I don't want somebody I going on before I, me I, does I, I'm not blaming you. So, so, but selfishly, for once, Mr. Giver, I said, Oh, I'm going to let him yeah. because they're going to see me and forget about Jimmy Fallon. I literally had that thought in my head. So I'm going, wait till you see me. And I do a long set. He's, he's just doing 10 minutes, you know, in the middle of the – anyway, so it's Caroline's of Broadway in New York. They have 11 people from Saturday Night Live yeah. there. I'm going, wait Michael till they Lauren, see was me. Oh, the whole yeah. works. The whole they're, all, they're all there. Ready. And she says, oh, they, they're, you know, they want to sign my but they're going to forget that. Yeah. I swear to God this is true. He goes on. He, he did very well. He killed yeah. I go on stage. Hey, everybody! Eleven seats, all empty. They <laughs> signed him in the other room. <laughs> they, oh, boom! That Exodus. The time. They just all they all that they happened. cared about. They weren't there for a night of comedy. No, they, they had an they agenda on this person that they picked was that's who they were going to see. Yeah, they wanted to see Jimmy. He was 23, 24 years old. Yeah, he brought off the turnip truck. Right, and very he was green. I mean, he only had five minutes of material. I mean, yeah. he, he did troll dolls and impressions right. like. You know, singing. It's his personality. He's got a great personality, and it's very engaging, very, and childlike. Yeah. You know, Tri- kind exactly. of Pee Wee Hermanish. Exactly. Like, and, but it's not a character like Pee Wee Herman. This is who he, <laughs> who he really right. is. But I mean, stories like that with you it happens all the time. I mean, there was so many comedians are are involved when somebody gets broken, and, and are there when it happens. I mean, I, I you know I was there. I was there for the big Conan when we remember the twelve thirty show and they picked Conan to take that John Stort, which, which people were like, "Are you kidding it was, me?" It was John John, John Stort audition? It was his to have. It was his because to he have. was big. He was he had a he had a show on like MTV. I oh, he was. I mean, I I and Conan yeah. didn't even go on stage. He was like, no. you know, he was He's a writer. Like, he was a writer, Harvard yeah. guy, mm-hmm. worked for the Simpsons, and he got the job, and it all worked out. I mean, his he was on the air for many years, oh, yeah. but I mean, it would have been a little different if John Stort had that twelve thirty spot. What do you think would have been different? He would have had the Tonight Show and succeeded. Oh, I think so. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a stand-up. I might debate you on that. I think John Stewart's brilliant, but I don't know if brilliance goes for on that in that slot, in that yeah. slot that Johnny Carson had. Not Johnny Carson was yeah. brilliant in his own way, but not in a way of making you think. That's not what Johnny Carson did. When Jimmy Kimmel's not a stand-up, uh, Colbert's not a stand-up. Right. Conan O'Brien wasn't a stand-up. That's true. Johnny wasn't a stand-up. He Johnny was a, wasn't. He, he was, was a magician. magician. Yeah, he was a magician. Jay was Jay was a stand-up. Joan Rivers was a stand-up. Jay was a real stand-up. Oh, that's, he, that's he held high. Jay, Jay Jay's going to die on stage. Yeah, he, I mean he's going to die eating a pizza right before he goes on, <laughs> and he'll he'll die on stage. That that's how Jay's going to go out because he loves performing and he loves telling jokes. He loves he's he loves a joke smith. He, he loves which it. made him awkward at first, or even for a while on. You know, doing a talk show because he's just going. I want to tell a joke here, and that's something you have to literally train yourself not to do. He's trained joke, 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 set up joke, set up joke, set up joke, set up yeah. joke, and now he's ha- trying to have a sincere conversation yeah. with people that are promoting their movie. It was tough. I mean, we, I, I, I produced a lot of those yeah. segments with with celebrities, and you know, we went over the segments at lunch, and I had we had a drill it in his head like where we want to get what story. 
and you know, it was tough sometimes. It was challenging. But Jay, you know, Jay, all he cared about was the monologue, yeah, his exactly. cars, right, and, right. His, and his gig that night. Where, right. Where's he going on the plane right. to do a gig? That's all he cared about. Yeah, he, he, he would care go, about he it. jets off, and I heard that he does the same material every time for 20 Oh, years. that's why he never did an HBO special. He yeah. never did it because he didn't want to burn the material. If he did an HBO special, all yeah, that material he can right. never do again. And yeah. you know that. Yeah. And that's, it's I mean, a, they've, they've a, offed him millions brilliant, of dollars brilliant to do Brilliant tactic. Netflix. And he doesn't. He doesn't want to. Be, he does not want to burn it. You know. And he, he still does. Like you know. I remember. I opened for him when I was a kid. I was so ex- excited. And I remember. He, I seen Reagan cut the food for the blind today. <laughs> oh, I think they could see if they put their minds to it. I would all, I always remember that joke because that's Reagan was in office. That's how long ago it was. It was in the eighties, and I was so excited to open for him. But my memory of him is chicken. He just would eat. Fried, tons of fried oh, chicken. He, he eats like a, he's 68 right now. He eats like At a least. teenager. He goes to McDonald's twice a week. <laughs> twice a week, he'll go through the, I mean, food for him is just like a energy source. He doesn't enjoy, and when, when he brings food back to his house, he'll eat standing up. I mean, he, he, he and he doesn't, the thing about Jay is, he, he doesn't drink. He said he's never tasted alcohol, okay? What? And I wow. said, I said, I was at the improv many times with you. And I always, you always had like a Coors Light, Miller Light in your hand. He said, Ross, I never drank it. I wanted to fit in. <gasps> you know, he wanted to fit in with people. Whoa. So he I never. Feel like I'm getting a scoop here on Enlightened Up. He, he, he never, he never, he never took a, he never took a sip of it. Wow. He was just, he just had it so he could, he could feel he's part of the gang. Isn't it incredible that this generation now already they don't know who he is. They don't know who Johnny Carson is. No, not Johnny Carson. It, That's I mean, fascinating to me. I mean, such a legend. I mean, Johnny Carson's iconic. He, I mean, he's he's the bar, the gold standard that no one will. I would say in our history. Well, you can't anymore because there was only three channels, I, and I, anyone who would compete with him, they got defeated right away. I wonder if Johnny would have been me too. I mean, if he was around now, hundred percent. I mean, I think so too. Oh, just looking at Charo's breasts. <laughs> I mean, I think I think do. he would have been. Me he would too. have women on. I like mean, that. I know some of the women he slept with, and back in the day, like a long time ago. Yeah. And some of them like kind of worked for him and stuff, and he oh. would have been me too. Oh know? I mean, yeah. he would have been out. Um, oh, don't you remember some of the bits he would have? There was like that one blonde. She yeah, always come sis on. Rundell. My mom and her were good friends. Oh yeah, I had a crush on her. Oh yeah, hilarious. And she she married the guy from Bruce Springsteen, that Niels Longren, Neil Nils Nils Lofgren. Well, she married him. Well, he's married to Amy. I, a, I happen to know that. But look at he he. Oh, he was once he, married. Yeah, to this he was married to sis. From, no way. Yeah, he was married to. You can look it up. And she was married to sis for a long time. Wow. And. Um, she was like a play, you know, she would be the girl in the jacuzzi with Johnny. She exactly. Was, you yeah. know, she, yeah. she was, you know, she had a great body. And, right. Um, uh, you know. And he would go, Ooh. And a, you know, it was always a, some a, a like perverted story. little lurky thing. I, I'm a big Cincinnati Reds fan. I was a kid. I was probably 12, 13 years old. She was, she was dating Johnny Bench. So we went, so we, so we drove, she drove my mom's Cadillac. That must the, have thrilled you. So we told my mom's Cadillac to the yeah. game. Yeah. And, um, after the game, we met Johnny like outside the locker room, and he drove us back to his house, to my house. I didn't mm. sign all my cards. Yeah. And uh, wow, he took sis, and he took him back to her place. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking like Smirnoff now. Uh-huh. But I mean, so I mean, the story. That's the only like way that. Smirnoff gets laid is in other people's stories. Uh huh. So now, so. Johnny Bench, how did you ever become an Ohio fan? So my dad, like my, my dad is from Cincinnati, Amberley Village. Oh, my dad it. went to University of Cincinnati. That makes sense. My my aunt and uncle who live in Florida now okay. are from Cincinnati. Got it. I used to spend summers in Cincinnati. My parents were divorced. That, so enough we, said. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So I I was around the Big Red Machine when I was a well, kid. Well, you become your your parents yeah. whatever they're I mean, into. I'm a big sometimes. Reds fan. Um, Bengals had a great season this year. Big Bengal fan. Yeah, and, uh, I know you're full on so, Cincinnati. So. When my when my aunt and uncle lived, they lived right next door to to, to Dan Dreesen, um, who was like a bench player for the Reds. But uh, we, you know, we were like friends, and I mean, so many he, great. He stories. started a bunch, but yeah. um, it, I think it's I think it's better character if you live in Los Angeles and you do go with a team that isn't here. You know, what I mean, like because we find one another, the Philly fans, and I'm sure you find your oh, Bengal yeah. fans, and 
it's kind of like a little it's like it's a, little a little club. club. It's very exclusive because yeah, yeah. you know there's not many Eagles fans running around Los Angeles, not many Bengal fans running in LA. I mean they're right. all Rams fans or Raider fans. Or well you even, find them though, you bond with them instantly. Instantly. Yeah. And and I know you went to the Laker game recently when they played the Sixers. And yeah. I'm sure that half the crowd was probably Sixer fans because the Lakers are stink. <laughs> and <laughs> they stink. I mean, horrible. And I'll, I think Albeed's gonna be the MVP. We'll see how they do in the playoffs. But the Sixers have a good shot. I like I like went to school with James Harden. I like Harden. He's great. This is going to come out, by the way, after the playoffs, this this podcast. After June? So we're going to find out if you are oh. truly Ross the boss. <laughs> well, I, 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 I like Memphis in the West. I'll just say it now. Memphis in the West. Nice. It's April right now. And in the East, I'm... I'll, I'll take I'll take the Sixers. I I, I think I think they can win with not them. a chance. They're not going past the first round. You're insane. You're they're insane. not. They're not going past the first okay. round. That's fine. They're not even going to beat Toronto. We'll see. Yeah. Well, we now you've heard it. There and you go. Whoever's whoever's watching. There you go. They'll they'll be able to see who is the great prognosticator. Is it Ross the boss? You have your own sports show on Fireside on the app. I, I, I do. A, I do a sports show on the YouTube called MFSN. Uh, I've uh, we have like almost five thousand subscribers already. It's going really well, and we do all fantasy sports. And I also interview celebrities. I interviewed you, and I also I was on that show. Yeah, I interviewed Harry Mandel. I interviewed you. I interviewed Cedric. I mean, interview everybody. And then, um, and then I have an app that's Mark Cuban's the co-founder that you have a show with us, which yes. is, which which is going fantastic. That that um, it's kind of having your own TV studio on your iPhone, but you yeah, do it's it. called Fireside. Uh, it's called it's, Fireside. It's, it's interactive. It's which interactive, is great. and you can download it for free. Um, yeah, it, it's everything's free. There's no there's no money. Um, I do like the interactive part of it because I bring people on. They call it bringing them on the stage. And you get direct, you know, I, like right now it's just you and me and yeah. maybe a couple guys I, on the I, other I end. I do my of... show with Craig Kilborn. Yeah. And Craig's great. He's a big Minnesota Timberwolves fan. And we talk. Well, we people talk... don't realize he had a talk show. That's sad. What's yeah. sad? They don't. People don't realize he had his own late night show on. Yeah. And he also had, he also had on Comedy Central, he had yeah. the Daily Show. He's the first host. Right. Of the Daily Show. Very and, talented And before guy. that, he was on ESPN as the as the host for the for the for Sports Center. He's, he had it all. And by the way, what I liked about him was I don't like this about Sports Center. Do you know where I'm going with this? They try too hard to be comedians. As a comic, we know who's authentic, who's real, who's really truly funny. And they try so hard. They they do. I mean, they, they, they even their commercials. It just tries so. I mean, they're hard. some of them are creative, but yeah, I, mean, I, I used to love Stuart Scott. I used to love oh, Chris yeah. Berman. I used to, you know. But Berman went downhill, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He, oh, you agree? Oh, he had those horrible hair plugs, and you know, I mean, it was horrible. <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they, the color of his hair looked like horror. I mean, just. Well, I mean, it was also the content. It just got. He got very old. Yeah. yeah. He, he tried too hard. And I don't like to criticize anyone, but but I my do. point, my point, <laughs> my point. You can. Well, you were a judge for all of those years on Last Comic Standing. Did you ever have a situation on Last Comic Standing where you've just felt so bad, but you had to say it anyway? I gave people – people got mad at me because I was hard on people. And I you told, were? I said, were you di more difficult than Bob Reed? Oh, partner? I was I was the Simon Cowell. But – You were? What I told these comics, I said, listen, if I was nice and there was no moment there, you would not make the cut. So I had to, like, get it out of you, like, what's wrong with your act, what you should change. I would say, like, have you ever made anybody laugh ever? I mean, I, I would say these kind of things to people, and and you can go to YouTube, you can watch it. And, and there's this not, guy. That there was this guy. They had music. The there was like a Wild West. You music. Made, you, as a, did you, you I, I, I said, I have a question for you. Have you ever made anybody laugh ever? And the guy would look like at me like I was crazy. And then no, and, you're an asshole. That's what uh, yeah, he was but thinking. If, if I didn't like Simon, right? But if I didn't have that kind of fun with people, yeah. Again, I I, I was doing it so they'll get on TV. Because I know because they're going to make the cut. Because they're going to make the cut because exchange. there was a moment there. Simon Cowell, I've seen him say, "Stop, stop, stop," and he has them do another song even. And then, then there's this. Oh, big I would do that all the time. There's I'd this big victory stop. though when they nail this song because, and then Simon gives the thumbs up like, "Hey, I helped you." Like a producer, you're yeah. acting like a producer, which is what people should do. If we glad hand everyone, how can you get better in life? Anyway? Exactly. Yeah. And I would tell people, you got to have an opening joke. You got to. Ha I gave them suggestions. I said, you have yeah. to, you got to have a throwaway joke in the beginning. You 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 got to have a joke like. I have, a, I have a question for you about comedy. You've been around a long time. What comic do you think has the most laughs per minute? It's he's not famous, but this guy would have laughs like every twelve seconds. Or I, I mean, I I had like a clock going on when I was at the improv, like. 
Last, I was going to give you a really weird one. I, mine's weird, and you know them. Mine's but, out of nowhere. Mine, mine, I, I would is, laugh this is too, if this but is I, I want right to know. One. I want to know who. I want to know who you think laughs per minute. Because a lot of comics, tell I've been stories. accused of doing heavy LPMs. Oh, you're 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 up there. I mean, bam, bam, bam. I, bam no, bam, no, you're yeah. up there because the so, but but so I I'm gonna I don't do impressions. By the way, where you you haven't seen my act in a long time. Well, I'm, you, know, I don't, you have a few impressions. Not, keep not really, but anyway, I'm gonna say Greg Hahn. I would die that's, if I got it. That's a good one. No, not him. Not Greg. I, Greg's funny. Very high energy. Uh, yes. Very yes. great facial expressions. Yes. But, you know, like he's he's like a killer actor. So People like you know grab their cheeks. My, my guy is Evan Davis. Whoa! I mean, he would destroy, wow. destroy every night. That's out of nowhere. That's I mean, I never seen him. Big have a, writer. He's a he lives really on a boat. He's, I mean, no, he's known for he lives on a boat. Yeah, he lives on a boat. apparently, the jokes per second did he lead the money. He, but, <laughs> he was so he, epic back then. I mean, this is wow. Not, well, in, in the nineties, but he. Uh, Look him up if you've never seen Heavy him. LPS. Uh, yeah, I know he's a great writer. I did not real and and performer. I didn't realize it was to that level though. I mean, Greg Hahn, for instance, is like a grab. You know, you got to grab your belly and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I believe that we need more of those. I, I'm not disagreeing. I, I mean, mean comics now are comics now are lazy. They they rather put their content on their YouTube channel than do a late night show. Not only that, I think there's this like attitude, like you know. I'll, I'll give you an example athlete-wise, what I heard about Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons does know how to shoot, but his ego is so great that even in practice, he would, he would just, like, he would, like, shoot but not, like, like really, you know, pose it like you're right. supposed to, everything you're supposed to do. It, it, so then if you miss, you just go, ah, I'm not really trying. Yeah, it's an excuse. It's a crush. Exactly. Comics do the same thing. Exactly. Like, I'm not really trying. Oh, I'm, I'm not really. I'm not, not doing They take their stuff. notes on stage, yeah. you know. So that's a big difference between me and the comics is I'm going to give you everything right. I have. Every If you're paying money, you're going to get every right. bit. So they have that. So I always look for – I book comedians sometimes in country clubs and things like that. I look for – I call them old pros, yeah. you know, the ones that do have the LPS and they're just driving at home and they've got a point of view and they just really – they appreciate the art. But there's so many people – and I don't want to be these kids today – but there are some young ones. I'll, I'll give you one who I think is a very, very strong okay. comic. And he's n young and new and really puts it out there. And he, do he does do the YouTube videos and the TikToks, but he's also really good on stage. Is Adam Ray. Oh, I know Adam. He's, yeah. he's not that new. Um, <laughs> I mean, not like a new guy. Like, right I think he's good. He's not that he's good. Not, <laughs> no, no. He's, he's good. It's funny. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. But it's like, he's, you know, he's somebody I've known for a while. Uh, very funny. I mean, he's, he's like you said, he's cut from the old school cloth that has jokes. But he's a young guy. But he works on his craft, and he, he technically is he is young. I mean, you're 100 percent right. Yeah. And, and he's not lazy. I mean, he goes. No. no. I mean, he's he. I mean, these comics. He give he gives it everything he has. He doesn't go up and throw away his set. No. He really he really is no. committed to it. But if he, and that's the thing is, that, and it, I realize the throwaway is a fear. That's really what if you boil it down to, they're afraid of looking bad. They're afraid of their ego. So they just go, ah, oh, I wasn't really trying. If you and I went to the Laugh Factory Comedy Store Improv, even Ice yeah. House, and you went on for 20 minutes and did your set that you usually do, I don't think any of these guys can follow you. 99% um, of them can't follow you. I find – I don't think they can. I find that people – this is going to sound weird, but um, black people can follow me pretty easily. And – if, if they're high I, I energy, say easily. If, if they have, if I they, should say easily. But there is something that happens. There are mostly white crowds that we work, right? Right. But there's something that happens if someone is African American. I don't know, you know, like to say the term African American. It could be from Britain and African Britain. You know, I, mean, I know. I use. You know, black. I, I say black. I yeah. Mean, you know. So I have a bit in my act. I go, you know, we, we always whisper it. You can't. You always go. He's black. <laughs> <laughs> you look around first. He's black. I go. What did you say? Black. So anyway. I have found I have found that black people <laughs> there's something that happens to an audience when I walk on stage. This is one of the reasons I do a long. I've never talked to you about this. The reason I do a long set is it takes me a while for them to like me because I walk on stage and they resent me. I've been years of a, 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 an oppressor, right? Right. We're the bad guy, big white guy, bad guy, bad guy. Black, you walk on stage, you go. There's always this this. You know, unless you're like a racist crowd, which is rare, you know, if you're in cities and stuff like that. 
But a black person goes on stage and just going, hey, we're with you, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever you say, take us on a ride. And it's also something that they're not familiar with. So if you're familiar with something, that's how you can resent that 100%. thing. You always resent your own kind. I, I'm not disagreeing. And, yeah. and it, you know, it's like you're cheering them on, you know? Yeah. And, and you're cheering them. And, you and go, and, and, you know. And if you don't laugh at them, you will say, oh, that guy's a racist. He's not laughing that at That too. You know? And so you're kind of – but a lot of, you know, again, that stuff – really didn't happen back in the day. I mean, when Arsenio Hall went on, very funny, had yeah. jokes, mm -hmm. did really well. People were laughing because like, Damon, Damon Wayne's the same thing, Keenan Ivory went. Oh, I'm not say, I'm saying mean, that the easier, now, the easier to people to follow me are definitely black. Yeah. It's easier to follow me oh, because, totally. because it's a complete contradiction to me. Yeah. You know, being a, this and, white and guy. Probably a woman too, I would say. Oh, no, black woman especially. Yeah. You know? I mean, even like, you know, there's this comic, I don't know if you know her name, Wendy Liebman. She's very funny. <laughs> Uh, she, I, she's, you know, she's did like. Do you see her out there? Did you see her? Uh, yeah, I can see through walls. I can, I can. I, I thought, you, I thought she, because she is coming in. Oh, now you gave it away. No one's going to listen to me. Great. <laughs> uh huh. You're on a whole other week. We we stack these shows. I know we you do. we, we release them weekly every Thursday, and you're going to promote us on your on your podcast. podcast. I will exactly. All right, Ross. Man, we could just go on forever. I have a gift for you. Oh, is it one of these Emmys? I got. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a big laugh. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bequeath you one of my Emmys or my little. I'll give you a trophy. <laughs> I don't want to try. I have enough trophies. You're going to like this one. This is my most cherry. Look, I got Comedian Year, American Comedy Awards. Oh, these little I trophies. was there. When you won that award, I was there. Were you really? Yeah, Bud, Bud was the executive producer of that show. We, should, oh. we had to go every year. I, I sat, had to go. I, I sat. I had, sat, to, I had sit, to go. I had to sit through your victory. I, I sat with. Rick Greenstein, who used to be your agent, yes, I was at right. his table. And Do you know what? He's part of my joke that I told. I said, all these people are like him and my manager at the time, Alan David. Alan David, that's his name. They would say, they'd that's say, his name they'd with say, a cigar. They'd say, uh, love that guy. You know, you're going to thank me, right? People would ask me yeah. to thank them. Oh, I'm talking loads, accountants, whatever it was. I said, you're going to thank me if you win, right? I think a lot of people thought I'd win. So it's like an Oscars for comedians. And anyway, so. I said, eh, you know, I won. I get up there. I remember. And I, and I, said, I said, a lot of people asked me to thank them for helping me with my career. I said, I'd like to take this opportunity. I already know them. I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank the people I'd like to help me with my career. So I'd like to thank Mel Brooks, Stevie, <laughs> Stevie Spielberg, Marty Scorsese. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so, and, and that's I mean, how I approach it. That, but, that's great. And, you know, a quick, quick Rick Greenstein story. I yeah. love this story because I, 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 it, it, tells, it tells you about Bud. So Bud and Rick, Bud know, Friedman. Bud Friedman was having lunch at Mommy's Own back in the day with Rick Greenstein. He was a brand new agent at APA. At, at APA, yep. and he scheduled his lunch. He thought it was a big shot, so he wore his best suit, this white, beautiful suit. Uh huh. White, and white, Hilarious. beautiful suit, like brand new. He was really proud of it. And Bud sits down. Bud orders pasta. Uh huh. Bud's known to like stain everything he has, <laughs> everything when he's. So Bud's eating. The pasta splashes, hits the suit. <laughs> Rick didn't know what to do. And, and Bud sees it on his suit. And Bud, this is what Bud says. I said all the time, it's better you than me. So Bud thought that Rick did it, but it was really Bud who did it. And, and he like ruined this suit, beautiful brand new suit. But so I still say like, it's better hilarious. you than me. It's very, very funny. Do so. both of them know that story? And oh yeah. See I, I see Rick at Christmas sometimes. Yeah. We go to the same Christmas party once in a while. And, That's great. And I bring it, I bring it up all. I love that story. You know what he did for my career? No. Nothing. <laughs> All right, here you go. Here are vitamins for you. Highest vitamins. These are really great vitamins. I have great hands. You know, did you notice how how I had all the energy in the world when I was at that convention? Uh -huh. How much energy did I have? You had a lot. You weren't even drinking Coca Cola or any but, caffeine. Uh, by the way, man. we would meet we would meet people, and and uh, Ross would go up to the hot women and go, you know, he's on the cover of Billionaire Magazine, <laughs> <laughs> and they believed you. Oh, they, they would like. I've never been so wanted. They would squirm like so fat. They would like. <laughs> it was like right to you. And like when you walk said in, that, oh, they, they were like, and you know, these girls were just all smiles. It was oh, it was, they didn't even. If, they, and, if and, I was on fire, they wouldn't piss on me. There's no such normally. thing as billionaire magazine. I know we just knows. made it up. We just Craig made it up. I thought it was a great line. 
because billionaires wouldn't want to be on the cover of magazines because they don't want their name out there. Uh, but, but nobody's Craig, going logical but, when you're. But, but Craig had the whole look. He had the jacket. He had the hands in the pocket. He, he looked. You look like. A, I didn't realize like, that was a billionaire with look, hands look, in my pocket. You look. Uh, you look like Just a billionaire. Feeling my money that's in there. <laughs> you look good, but we we did have. A, I'll we let you go, but we we did have a great time in that conference. We, we sure did. And, we, uh, yeah. I'm so happy you. And by the way, I'm so happy you came with me. Isn't because, life great though when you can have fun while you're making money or yeah, while you're I mean, learning? If you, or, if you weren't there and if I wasn't there with I you, know, right? you and I would you and I would be going crazy. I mean I probably would have come home. I mean if you weren't there. My boy Ross was there. By the way, those vitamins I'm gonna try high, these. Highest vitamin you're not gonna try them, you're gonna have them all. And if you want to uh-huh. get new ones, you get a twenty percent off if you use the promo code Laughter Heals and fifty percent of the proceeds. Oh, go your to your Heels comedy your your charity is called Laughter Heals. That's exactly right. Uh-huh. That's what it goes to. It's great for energy and focus, which you need, babe. I need a lot of help. He needs help. His legs have been twitching around the entire time. You know, Len- <laughs> Leno does the same thing I, 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 with his legs. He, My therapist used to say to me, "Your leg is saying something." Yeah, the Leno would w- 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 sit down with him. He'd be like this. My partner, you're about to meet, Shell. He has the same thing. Yeah, the leg. It's just, it's just a going. nervous twitch. I stopped it because this therapist had me. He said. What is it saying? So you have to feel what it's saying. I'll go over it with you. Yeah, Ross, our time is up. Okay. Listen, I hope oh, Ethan Cole can't. Oh, I have an Ethan Cole candle for you. Look at this. Oh, the wife is going to love this. Bro, smell this. Smell it. I can't get it to you. Uh huh. Lavender, rosemary, mint. These are Ethan Cole candles. Now, go there. Go for your Christmas presents. I am telling you, women go crazy, right? It's and great. it's natural and it has a wood wick. It has a. A oh, nice sound, like a burning fire. I want to take this too. This is great. You actually might get laid. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, anyway, Ross, always fun having you. Ross, Mark, uh, go p- check out his podcast MFSN, on Fireside. MFSN.com and download the Fireside app. There you go. And Craig does a show every week, and he has great topics and great stories, and I come on all the time with him. And, yes, uh, you do. We have a great time. It's fun. All right. Well, wear sleeves next time. Ross, I, the I boss. Ross, Mark, real pleasure having you here on Enlighten Up. Hey, by the way, everybody, remember this. Enlighten the fuck up, will you? <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>